Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. We're excited to have one of our partners, Peter Wolf from Azamba, and he's going to be presenting on top five ways to improve customer retention and drive sales with CRM. And as a reminder, we are recording this webinar and we will post it to our on-demand webinar library for you to review again or share with anyone. And we encourage you to ask questions along the way. So please feel free to type them into the questions box and we will get them answered during our Q&A time at the end of our session. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Peter to kick off our presentation. Thank you very much, Angie, and thanks to the Inovia team for inviting me back. As Angie mentioned, we've done a few of these sessions in the past, so you should check out their, their web resource library and uh, take a look at some of those past presentations as well. Um, I'm Peter Wolf. I've been helping companies like yours with CRM for the last 20 years, so I've been doing this a long time, got a lot of gray hairs to prove it. Today, we're gonna talk about the top five ways to improve customer retention and drive sales with CRM. And at the end of the day, why do people get CRM? I think customer retention, driving sales, driving profitability, those are all really important reasons. And um, to, for us, that's how we look at CRM. It's, it's a tool to reach those business goals. It's not just a technology. So hopefully that will come through today. And I would encourage you, if you wanna have a private one-on-one -on -one conversation to reach out to your Novia rep, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn or at that email address there. So without further ado, let's get started. So why are people looking at CRM these days? Well, a lot of it has to do with this, this place where we all are, where we now live in what I call a customer experience economy. It's something too glamorous or exciting. You might even say, Peter, we've always been in a customer experience economy. That's true. I think more than ever though, and I'm sure you feel it. I know my customers feel it, I feel it but there's more competitive pressure than ever before. Our competitors are one or two clicks away on the internet. Um, we need, we're expected to live up to a new standard of responsiveness and quality. There's a saying I like to, to put out there, which is customers today and prospects too, demand a consistent high quality experience. And if we don't provide it, you can bet they're gonna go to Google or Bing or whatever their favorite search engine is and find someone who will. And again, our competitors are out there on the internet. They're right there for our customers to find, our prospects to find. So it's on us to make sure that we take care of them. Um, and a lot of businesses just are struggling with this right now. And um, a lot of companies are, are losing profitability, having problems with retention. A lot of these problems, the number one root cause is there's silos of information and expertise throughout your organization. And I'm not just talking about silos between departments, such as like a lot of times it's very common to have the accounting information be over here with this group of people, the sales information over here with this other group of people. But even within departments, um, a lot of the prospects that we talk to still are using Outlook and spreadsheets to manage their sales process. That works to an extent, but not in a world where our prospects demand quick, fast, high quality experiences from us. Um, people just don't have the patience that they used to have. The other thing that happens is uh, you, you wanna make sure that that information, that knowledge is shared among your team. Probably about five, 10 years ago, I would say most businesses we dealt with, each salesperson kind of have their own world and their own accounts they, they dealt with. More and more these days, companies have moved to a team-based shared account, uh, account management strategy. Um, and that might include the marketing people, product experts, the actual account managers or salespeople, but everybody works together to serve those prospects and customers. You can't really do that when data is trapped in Outlook in each of our individual email boxes. And even in spreadsheets, you know, it's just really hard to put a note in there that says follow up tomorrow. Well, it's trapped in a spreadsheet on row 4,232. Who's gonna see that note? Who's gonna know to follow up? How am I gonna know if Angie put that note in or Susan followed up with that customer or not? So there's a lot of problems with these silos of information. The good news is that CRM, this is the promise of CRM. CRM, the number one facet benefit of CRM is it puts everything that you need at your fingertips when you need it. So it takes all the information across your company and puts it into CRM um, so that you know, if I need to follow up with a customer that Angie spoke with, I can see that note. If uh, one of our customers calls in with an issue about something I sold them, 
my people can see what I promised them, what we sold them, et cetera. So we all are operating from the same playbook. And the beautiful thing about that data is it can pull forward from other systems too. So it's not about data entry. In fact, I'm gonna to come to that point um, here shortly, but um, it's not about data entry. It's about bringing all the data together from whatever sources you have into one place so whoever needs it can get to it when they need it. So Dynamics CRM, as you may know, integrates very nicely with NAV and BC and other systems so that um, that data will just flow forward, that accounting data, the open receivables, um, who owes us money, who's on credit hold, past quotes, past orders, what products people own, that's all right there in the CRM tool so that people can take action appropriately to uh, help serve those customers. So moving on from there, there are some challenges with CRM. Most of these are for there, I can't speak. Most of these revolve around uh, adoption challenges. So for, for me, the technology, as I said before, I've been doing this for 20 years. Microsoft's technology is just frankly amazing. Uh, it's really a slick and beautiful system. I'm gonna show you some of this here in a few minutes, but there's struggles with change. No one likes change. Everyone you know, just struggles with change. So a big part of adoption is focusing on practical, actionable things that will make the lives of your people who use CRM better. A lot of companies come to us and they're focused on the business goals for CRM. So getting that visibility, getting that um, insight into what my people are doing, who's doing what, who's not doing what, kind of that big brother approach to things, giving my dashboards, my reports. And that's great, you can do that. What we start with though, is we say focus on the users, make their lives better. And so one of the pieces of that, so I said the first benefit of CRM, the main benefit was getting all the data in one place. The second benefit is automation. So automate those touch points, those follow-ups, those things that otherwise I have to do as a user, automatically do those for me so I don't forget about them, so I don't have to remember to do them. It lowers my stress, it increases my productivity, makes my day um, a lot easier to get through because I'm not having to juggle 45 different balls in the air. I can just focus on the ones that I can make the biggest impact. And we're gonna talk about this here in a minute too, but to me, the focus is, we around, at my company, I say we sell to management, but I implement for the end users. And I also use CRM, so I know from the user perspective, there are challenges to learning anything new, and CRM is no different than that, especially if you've been using Outlook and spreadsheets for the last 10, 20 years. So let's dive into this a little bit um, and talk about some, some adoption timeline. If you do go forward with CRM, if you wanna work with us, we have what's called an adoption flight plan. So we'll get you up and running in three to six weeks with what we call an MVP, a minimum viable product, or some people will call it a minimum valuable product. So the, the piece of software that is valuable to you and your team, where you're gonna see a return on investment, you know, we're gonna work closely with you to get that up and running quickly. Then once you're up and running, we're going to do some coaching. So again, to help ease that adoption and make sure that things, there's less of a struggle, we're gonna ease that with that four to five weeks here after you go live to make sure things smooth over and uh, all your questions are getting answered. And then after that, um, we're gonna keep on helping you and guiding you and showing you kind of how to take it to the next level. And the goal is to turn your business into a lean, mean, profitable machine. So I'm gonna skip ahead on this and I'm gonna actually jump over to the software itself. And the first thing that we talk about when it comes to adoption, I'm just gonna close this down here. The first thing that we talk about with adoption is this piece here, which is email integration. And so this may seem counterintuitive because we're talking about CRM, but I'm gonna start where most people live, which is an Outlook. And if you have teams, you should know that the same thing I'm about to show you, you can do inside of your, your team's uh, channels as well. So in my company, I live inside of Outlook, but I have a lot of my consultants, my service people who live inside of Teams. And wherever you live, you can access your CRM data. So for example, here, Angie sent me this email and Angie's already in my CRM. If she wasn't, there'd be a button here, which just lets me add Angie with a couple clicks. But I can see from here, you know, information about, um, Angie, her phone number, if she doesn't include SIG line, I can see her phone number, call her back right away. I can see information about her account. Right here, there's just a note about last activity. 
if there was um, a project we were working on with ANG or if there's open sales opportunities or if you track service tickets, you'd be able to see all that. The key thing is, and the number one principle to make life easier with CRM and to drive those sales and increase adoption is make it easy to get the data into your system. And so from this Outlook panel, Microsoft couldn't make it any easier for me. I can add Angie in, I can track this email so my fellow coworkers can see this email. So if I'm out sick or uh, Angie calls about this the 11.9 webinar, um, they could go in and see that Peter spoke with Angie on this date and here's the email thread. I could do more than that though too. I could do literally anything I want. So if Angie wants me to give her a phone call, I can just go ahead and pick a phone call here. Um, if there was something that she wants me to send her her last billing statement, I could set up a task for myself to, or, or for one of my coworkers to send Angie her last billing statement. I could add a new opportunity. So Angie wants to go forward with CRM, maybe I'll set up an opportunity to track that um, and just, sorry about that, um, track that and just make sure that that's flowing forward. Um, if she has a problem, a ticket, you know, we could track that. The key thing is Microsoft has made it very easy to get the data into the system. And that is a huge benefit when it comes to using CRM properly and getting the adoption that you want across your team to actually take advantage of the, the strength of CRM. Now I'm showing you here about uh, the, the data entry side of it, but you can get data other ways. So in our instance, we have a portal for our customers. So customers can go into the portal and update addresses, contact information, make requests for services, make requests for sales or additional products. So you can set up portals to feed the data automatically into your CRM. You could also set up an email agent. So if a customer emails you something at sales at your domain or services at your domain, the CRM system can be programmed to watch those mailboxes and automatically insert them in CRM and alert the appropriate person that this needs attention. And of course, if you go to trade shows or buy lead lists, you can import those easily. As you'd imagine uh, with a modern CRM system like Dynamics, you can uh, quickly and easily suck data into the system. So uh, that's, that's all pretty intuitive. The key there is you wanna make it easy for people to put data in and as much as possible, you wanna avoid rekeying data because Rekeying data is time consuming and it's fraught with errors. And worse than all that is it, will, it won't get done a lot of times. And I'm just speaking from experience. It has nothing to do with any one individual's desire to use CRM or not use CRM. But the real world experience says to me that if we make it hard for people to put data in the system, a lot of times they won't do it. They'll just skip on that. So that, that's an important thing to note. With that, I'm gonna jump over to the actual CRM system. So now inside the CRM system, I'd say the number two tip to improving retention and to improving and driving sales is just get organized with your day. So a lot of data comes into your CRM system. And if you're like my company and all of our prospects that we work with and all of our customers that we work with, um, you're almost drowning in too much data. One, one of the things that I get requests a lot is, if a new account gets assigned to me, can you send me a text message or an alert or send me an email? We can, you can definitely do that with Dynamics. Automation is a big strength of Dynamics. Um, it, I'd say it's probably the, the best thing going for it after the Outlook integration. But what we say is don't do it that way. Instead, train the people, train your users and give them value and reasons to go in here and get organized. So what do I mean by getting organized? This is a list of all my customers. It works just like a spreadsheet. So it organizes just like an Excel spreadsheet. If you've ever used a spreadsheet before, there's some beauty in the simplicity of a spreadsheet. This does that. But, and just like um, you would imagine a spreadsheet, I can say, just give me all my customers that have a certain type of plan. And bam, it goes like that. Um, I could say, give me just customers or prospects and you can slice and dice your data real quickly. The other thing you could do is if there's certain slices of, of information that you wanna look at, you can save those slices. So I can see all my active accounts. Accounts are prospects, customers, vendors, suppliers, uh, industry peers, whatever you wanna track. Customers are obviously just customers. You could also see a list of prospects, but you can take it to another level. So you could say things like, give me all my customers that I should call this week. And that is pretty open-ended, but you could write a view 
behind the scenes, it's pretty easy to write these views. When I say easy, I'm saying it's me measured in an hour or two, not days or weeks. It's not a, a customizing, configuring dynamics is very simple. Um, but you can say things like, you know, if it's an A-level customer, one of our most important customers, and I haven't talked to them for more than a week or two, they should show up on that view. If it's a next tier down, maybe if it's been a month or two, and then if it's a C-level customer, maybe we don't ever really put them on our radar because there's only so many hours in the day. And maybe we, instead we automate, uh, yeah, automatically, sorry about that, automatically send them out emails for those C-level customers. Maybe we don't, we still want them, we want to earn their business, want to keep them engaged with us, but we don't take up sales time to call them back. So those are just some different views that you can do. Another one that I like is um, customers with open quotes. So give me a view that says customers or prospects with an open quote and just give me that list so I can see, you know, just a relative sense of pipeline. You can go a lot deeper with that in the sales pipeline area, the opportunity area, but just from an account level makes it easy to get organized. Another way you can get organized is, um, and a, a lot of what I preach to our prospects and our customers is simplification. Too many people try to do too much with CRM, especially at first. So again, we preach crawl, walk, run. And so start with that MVP and get a quick ROI and then iterate once your team starts to adjust and, and accommodate. But one of the things that we all face is we're drowning in data points. And so you can easily, with Microsoft Dynamics, again, I'm using that word easy because again, it's measured in hours, you know, not days or weeks. Um, you can set up what's called context sensitive screens or dynamic displays. So this is a customer and I see information about their software licenses and their products. But if I make this a partner, you can see those things went away. Now there's partner details. So the key takeaway here is you can get organized and just show the information you need to see based on the type of data you're looking at. It makes it a lot easier for your people to focus and not drown in details that are irrelevant to them for the task at hand. Another thing that you can do to get organized is these screens are yours to control and lay out however you want. So what you're looking at here is actually my live layout. This is the layout that me and my team have decided were important for us. And for us, a lot of we do a lot of business with partners like Anovia. So for us, it's important to track the relationships and where that the source of the deal is. You'll notice on here, I don't have the address of the customer on here. That's on a different tab. It's still important to us, but it's not of primary importance. So we hit it. And so what you can do is you can put the important stuff on the screen and lay them out so you can see what you want. So for me, it's the basic con contact details, who at our team is playing which roles with this customer. We have a concierge, a coach, and a salesperson. Um, maybe the key contact here. We can have infinite contacts. I would go under the contacts tab, but if the primary one is right here. I've got room for a keynote. I've got their service plan that they're on, licenses they have. And then I've got these grids that quickly let me at a glance see what opportunities have we been working on, one or, or open still or lost. You can just see them all at a glance. Any service tickets, any products that they own. You have full control to paint the screen however you want. And each of these tabs also can be painted so you can adjust the system. In fact, when we do a rollout for our customer, it's one of the steps that we take is to it's configuration, it's not customization. We can configure your systems that the important stuff that you want to see is lumped together in the most intuitive way so your people can get organized and stay organized and be more effective at using all this data to do their job better. So there's other tricks to getting organized, but I want to kind of put a pin in that and move on. But those are some quick tip, tips that you can use to uh, get organized. I'm going to move on to automation. Now, in my opinion, uh, probably about up until about five years ago, the number one benefit for CRM was getting all the data in one place. And that was enough for people, just getting it out of people's outlooks and spreadsheets and accounting software and warehouse systems and you name it, putting it all in one place. That was the biggest benefit. It's evolved though, and more and more companies now want to automate. And I don't care if you're Amazon.com or you know a two-person shop, automation helps you do more in the same amount of time, be more responsive and reach that goal of giving that quick, consistent, high quality response to your prospects and customers. And again, that's what it's all about to serve that new customer experience economy that we're all living in. And so 
Microsoft has built so many different ways to automate. I'm going to cover a few of those here today, but we have added this little panel in for our customers. We call it easy buttons. And the easy buttons are a type of automation that is user driven. So if there's certain things that your customers or prospects or partners ask for on a regular basis, you can turn them into a single push button. And some of these automations, they're not these grandiose, huge scale automations. They can be, but a lot of times it's just the simple things. So for example, if a customer calls you up and says, can you send me my last bill? Well, I don't know about you, but right now what we most of our prospects would have to do is say, okay, sure, I'll do that. And either put them on hold or tell them you're gonna call them back, go to the accounting team or go flip, open up the accounting software, run a report, get their last bill, look it over, draft up an email, figure out what you have to say. Oh, here's your email, thanks for asking, um, and attach the bill and send it out the door. So if that happens a lot to you, it's not like that's a terribly burdensome process. It doesn't take a lot of mental gymnastics to do, but it does. it is a distraction, it takes you some time, and it, it interrupts your flow of what you're working on. So if a customer called me up, I could create a button here that just says send last bill. And it could go and go, go to the accounting software, go grab that data, go grab that last bill. And it could prep it, it could even send it out automatically to Teresa here at burger.com, or it could pop it on my email just for approval before I forward it on to Teresa. Just, you know, and you can do it however you want. You can control those automations so that you have granular control over how they execute. But the key thing is something that would have taken two, three, six, ten clicks elsewhere and maybe several minutes, um, you've turned it into a single push button. And that adds up very quickly. Um, in my experience, that alone can pay for the CRM implementation right away because you're taking processes that are interruptive and time consuming, death by a thousand cuts, and turn them into single push buttons where if a customer calls me up, if Teresa calls me up, I push that button, I'm back doing what I was doing right before she called and I'm on my way. And um, to add a little bit of extra love to this, um, you can actually create portals with Microsoft Dynamics where you give Teresa, your customer, a portal where she can log in and she can push that button herself, get me my last bill, or uh, send me the product literature. So uh, she's bought a certain product, maybe she pushes a button and it says, which product do you want? She puts in the product and it sends her out the specification guide or the product brochure or the pricing catalog, whatever it is that she wants. But the key takeaway there is that automation uh, really streamlines your business and helps you improve customer retention because you're going to make your customers happier you're going to turn things around faster and you're going to um, be able to get on your day to, to use your human intellect and the, the human creativity for the problems that really need it and not the ticky tacky kind of little administrative things so that's user-driven automation i mentioned there's a couple different ways to do automation the, another popular way you can do automation is based on date and data what do i mean by that um, let's say Brins Burgers is an A-level customer. They do a lot of business with us. And let's say we haven't heard from Brins Burgers, Teresa over at Brins Burgers, and it's been more than a week. So we've got a, a little tool that we add into our customer environments called Last Activity Dates. And so this tracks and keeps up to date the last time we spoke to Teresa. And so you could have a little automation that runs in the background that just says, for any A-level customer, and it's been more than three weeks, four weeks, it doesn't matter, you set the, the threshold how you want, send an email to Teresa and just say, hey, how you doing? Do you have time next week for a call? Or you could pop it on the salesperson's calendar and say, Peter, give Teresa a call. It's been more than four weeks or five weeks or whatever that since you've talked to her. And so the key thing there is that the system acts as what I call an invisible personal assistant and just keeps track of what's going on, what needs to be done, and it's gonna help avoid problems from blazing out of control for you and your team. It's gonna help you and your team focus on what's important to improve that customer retention and drive more business. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of a detour here. It kind of goes back to organization, so point two was getting organized, point three is about automating, but I'm gonna go back and show you this activity board. 
the activity board is the list of things that you have to do. And so we, before I mentioned, you know, you can do alerts, you can notify people, you can send them text messages and alerts about, you know, things that happened, like assigning an account to them or a quote that's expired. We aren't big fans of interruptions here. We like to see you and your team be more proactive than reactive. And so just like you've learned to look, check your email 10 times a day, 20 times, I, I probably check mine about 50 times a day at least. But so you come and check your activity board. And the activity board is all the things that you need to do to get organized about your day. And so the, this list gets built one of three ways. One is I put something on my own calendar. So I have to research this is issue. So that's, that's an obvious thing. Like you're in control of your own calendar, of course. Two is if coworkers are, have the power to do so, and you don't have to allow this, but most of our clients will, uh, coworkers can put things on my calendar. So Angie says, hey, Peter, you wanna do a webinar um, on, you know, in November about CRM, she can go into my calendar and put something on my calendar. And then the third way, and this is where, in my opinion, this is the most powerful thing, this is that payback that I was talking about, CRM, make sure I don't forget about things. CRM acts as my invisible personal assistant and it's telling me, hey, it's been a while since you talked to Dan. Dan's one of your best customers. Give him a call. And technically what I probably do is put a due date on these things just so you can organize them better. My sample data doesn't always have the best data, but you get the drill here. It can tell me to call Dan back. Or if I sent a customer a quote, it could put on my calendar two business days after I send the quote, follow up on that quote. And again, these rules, these automations can be granular. So what I mean by that is you have full control. You could say, put it on my calendar to call them back if it's one of my top clients or if it's over a certain dollar amount. But if it's a C-level account and maybe it's a small dollar threshold, we only have so many hours in the day. So practically speaking, maybe that doesn't warrant a call back. So instead, maybe the system will automatically email that customer and say, Hey, Dan, did you, you know, did you get the quote? Let me know if there's any questions. I'm here to help you. And it looks like it's from me, but the system's taking care of that for me and making sure that we're staying on top of that sales process, making sure that nothing falls to the cracks, making sure that no customer gets forgotten about, no quote gets forgotten about. So that's a very powerful thing. So that was number three. So we're at get data in is number one, get organized is number two, and then automate is number three. Those are the three top ways to uh, improve customer retention, drive sales. Now moving on to number four, which is control your day. A lot of our customers are smaller and um, this may be beyond them when they first get CRM and that's okay. Crawl, walk, run. You can start without this, what I'm about to show you, but we do encourage you to think about it at least because it can really drive a lot of productivity. And what I wanna do is, I think I picked the wrong, you know, there it is. Um, so. What you can do when I, when I talk about this control your outcomes is it's this business process flow at the top here. And so this business process flow um, allows you to set up steps and stages. And why do you want to do this? Well, a couple of reasons. One is you can start to measure how long things stay in each stage. So out of the box, you can see this deal here has been in the qualify stage for 11 days. And so over time, a lot of our customers don't know this information at first, and that's okay. Um, but once you start to use these things, you can start to measure what's in, um, what's our standard and what's out of variance. So what things need to be given special attention to. So for example, if I know my average deal sits in the qualify stage for 10 days, well, someone needs to jump on this because now this is at 11 days. So you can start to do those views I was talking about before and say, give me all my deals that are outside of variants um, so I can jump on them or address them. Maybe it's a, maybe there's a reason for it, maybe there's not, but either way they probably need attention. And you can even get more granular than that. You could break this down by type of deal. So just like before when I showed you the type of accounts, like a customer, you can see this information, a partner, you can see that other information. Well, deals can also be controlled that way. So if it's a booster deal, I see the booster details. And if it's an on-track deal, I see a whole different thing. So you have full control over that sales process. And these steps up here can also morph based on the type of deal it is. So, or the type of customer it is. Like if it's an A-level customer, um, maybe the sales cycle goes different. You don't have to have a qualify stage because they're already a customer. If it's a prospect, maybe you do have a qualify stage. So you can control 
these steps based on the type of data you have initially, but also the type of data you gather at each step. So as I go through each step, I have this opportunity to fill in additional pieces of data before I move on to the next step. So this is really powerful because you can actually control this and say, I can't qualify this unless I have a time frame, a budget, a decision maker, and some sort of real need that they have, not just, um, they're not just tire kicking. So you can control that process flow and make sure that each step only proceeds if the essential information is gathered. And then the last reason why people use business process flows is automation. So going back to, to point three, a lot of these things are very interrelated with dynamics because it all works together as a mesh to uh, create structural improvements to your organization to control outcomes and deliver that consistent high quality experience. But so as I move something forward from one stage to the next, so for example, the proposal stage, I mentioned this automation before, if I sent them a proposal, I'll automatically put a reminder on my calendar to follow up in two days. Or if I close them and we close them as one, and it was a prospect, automatically change them to a customer, uh, insert them into my business central or my other, whatever accounting software you have, just insert them into uh, there as a customer, an AR customer, um, maybe put a reminder on the salesperson's desk to follow up in 30 days to make sure that we're fulfilling on our promises. Um, but either way, you can create automation around that whole control process. So it works in tandem to ensure that you don't miss a trick and that you're delivering those great experiences. Okay. Now, I could spend all day talking about all the different ways you could do this. Um, so it, again, I mentioned this before. If you're interested in knowing more, I love to talk to people about their specific needs. It's hard to do justice in a, in a one-on-many demo like this. So if you have specific needs, reach out to your Novi account rep or reach out to me on LinkedIn, Peter Wolf, Azamba, pretty easy to find. I'm on LinkedIn a lot. Um, and I'd be happy to do a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. But now I wanna to come to my last point, which is watch over what you're doing. And truthfully, I've already hinted upon this um, a couple different ways, but in the opportunities, for example, you could have different views. And these views here in my sample system are kind of boring, but like, here's an exciting one invoice requested. So I can see all the deals right now that we're waiting on accounting to bill. You could do things like all my open invoices that are out or open opportunities that are outside of variance, like I said before. So if things are stalled out in the sales cycle, bring those to attention. So the views are a very powerful and direct way to work with data to create the actionable information that you need to drive something forward. Um, so I start with views. Then we move on to dashboards and dashboards is where it gets really exciting because dashboards can take you to a whole nother level. So dashboards, and this is a simple dashboard. You can have many different dashboards. You can have personal dashboards. So this is one I set up just for my user, but then there's also dish dashboards for all the team down here in the system dashboards area. But you can set up dashboards by user, by role. I could have different dashboards for a role. So I might have my daily sales dashboard which just tells me like my marching orders for the day and things I need to focus on. But then I could also have my quarterly dashboard or my big picture dashboard, which shows me how I'm doing compared to quota or how I'm doing compared to my peers or where my accounts sit versus, you know, tentatively what they could be doing if we were doing better with cross selling or upselling versus, you know, my peers. So like you can see a lot of different views. Uh, I'm going to focus on one particular type of dashboard though, which is this funnel. And I will tell you there's a lot of cool features with Dynamics this is one of my favorites. And this is a funnel. You could make pie charts, graphs, um, line charts, bar charts, like there's all sorts of different charts you can make. So you can make your visuals as pretty as you want them to be, but that's not even my favorite feature. My favorite feature is this. I can see the 50,000 foot view to get myself organized, get my bearings, but then I can drill down to the specific weeds of that opportunity. So I could say things like, give me all my deals that are qualified that I haven't sent out proposals yet. I've got these three deals. So now I can just drill into each one of these and just figure out where I need to be to send out the proposal. Maybe I need to reach out and do a phone call. Maybe I need to just get the paperwork done. But either way, these three deals are sitting in the qualify stage. So um, I wanna move it forward. In fact, this one was supposed to close last week and it didn't. So 
Uh, this one's like three months old. So it just is a great way to like get organized, get your bearings. And um, it's when you use these, you can not only use them for the individual level. So this is my open opportunities, but this is where I said before, you implement for the users and then management goals will be met. So once the individual users are getting their needs met with this pipeline to help them organize their day and drive their sales. And if they're salespeople, possibly they're getting commissions on their sales. That's great. But now as management, I could actually say, give me all opportunities across my entire team. So I wanna see everything that's going on across everybody, not just Peter Wolf's accounts, but everybody. And I got this, again, same idea. I've got this pipeline that lets me drill in and see what's going on at each of those stages. So that's what I mean by watching over your data. And at this point, Angie, I kind of flew through this real quickly, but I hopefully everyone got a, a gist of how you use CRM very practically to drive customer retention and drive sales. And just to recap the five points is make it easy to get data in. Microsoft does this with that Outlook integration, the Teams integration, integration with your website, integration with the ERP system. Um, it just makes it easy to get data in. That increases the likelihood that salespeople will use the software. The second thing is get organized around the data. So a big problem with using spreadsheets is it's hard to organize around it. With Dynamics, you can organize that data, you can slice and dice it, you can see what you need to see when you need to see it. That's powerful. It helps your people focus on what's important when it's important and not drown in details. The third thing is automation. So, and, and again, not a lot of companies don't set up automations from day one. That's okay, ease into the waters. A lot of times we tell people don't set up all these the advanced things initially. Get the basics, get the data integrated into one place, then set up automations. But once you start doing automations, it's going to change your life because it's going to make sure that things don't fall through the cracks. It's going to make sure that your people aren't spending cycles and time on the ticky tacky administrative things or worse, forgetting to do those things. Um, like I may choose to ignore something that my CRM told me to do, but that's on me because it's telling me to do it versus forgetting to do it, which is uh, a sin of omission, which is you know hard to forgive um, from a customer standpoint. That's what loses customers pretty quickly. And then the fourth thing was control. Control your outcomes, control your processes. And again, that's, a, that's usually a phase two for most of our customers, but if you set up even the most basic controls, it will start to help make sure that nothing falls to cracks. And then the fifth thing was just watch over what's going on, both at an individual level you want to have these tools, the views built into the Excel-like data repository, but also the dashboards, which allow you to see these big picture sweeping um, images of what's going on at your, at, your, at your team, with your team, across all your customers, across your prospects, et cetera. Those are all very powerful tools, and I hope you learned something today. I really appreciate you all for joining me. So Angie, I don't know if you have any questions from the audience, but I'm here for a while longer if people have questions. Thanks, Peter. Yes, we do have a few that came through. If anybody has any additional ones, please feel free to type those in and we can get those addressed. The first one is, how does this compare to Salesforce? Oh, wow, that's a great question. So uh, from a feature standpoint, so I don't focus on CRM as a technology. I focus on how does it make results happen? And so the top benefits of Microsoft Dynamics are the integration with Office is, it beats the pants off of any other solution out there. And so that integration is so tight, it makes it easy to use, adopt. Um, so from that standpoint, that's Microsoft Dynamics has a huge feather in its cap. The second thing is the flexibility. Some would argue that Salesforce is just as flexible as Dynamics, but I've been working with CRMs for 20 years now, and I've never seen anything as flexible as Microsoft Dynamics, and you can do things today in Microsoft Dynamics to tweak the environment. I don't even say the word customize anymore, but you can tweak the environment in a fraction of the time. Um, things that used to take my team 20, 30, 40 hours to do, we can do in an hour or two. That's an insane value for my customers. And for me, we're, we're users of the system as well. So um, we definitely see that benefit ourselves. And then the third thing that we see with uh, accounts is, hold on a second, I'm gonna put myself on do not disturb. I apologize for that, Angie. Um, this, the second, uh, third thing that we see is the investment that Microsoft's making. 
So Microsoft is making a massive investment in dynamics and all these other related technologies that are benefiting companies like mine, like yours, um, everyone out there, because they're really focused on business results. Every twice a year now, for the last couple of years, and it looks like it's going to go on for the next few years, at least in the foreseeable future, um, they're putting out massive overhauls. And when I say massive, I'm talking about like a table of contents of improvements that takes 15 minutes to read. That's how many improvements there are. The table of contents alone is a 15 minute read. So that tells you the amount of money that Microsoft is plowing into making this the best tool in the world. So hopefully that answers your questions, but if you have specific questions about something that Salesforce does, again, reach out to me, reach out to your Innovia account rep. Okay, thank you. Next question is, is this the same as the built-in CRM? Okay, that's a, that's a really great question. And the answer is no, this is a separate module. It integrates with your Business Central or your NAV, if that's what you have, but it's a separate module. And there is some discussion, and you should definitely call your Innovia account exec about this, but um, there's some discussion about whether you should use this or the other tool. I would say if your needs are basic and you just want some basic contact management and activity management, the built-in tool is, it's hard to beat because it's all there. It's all part of the Business Central. But if you want to build a true sales culture, service culture with automations and some of these advanced things that I showed you today, you'll need to look at this tool, um, at least to consider it in depth, because um, this will take you a lot further faster than the built-in tool. And uh, that's kind of me tap dancing around that, Angie, but hopefully it gives people a picture. Like if your needs are really simple and your budget is extremely tight, um, I would look at the built-in tool first. But if you really want to innovate and change your world, give me a call because this is the tool to do it. Okay, great, thank you. How much does this CRM cost? How much does the CRM cost? That one, um, I can't answer real quickly here, but the licensing can cost, it's $65 per user per month. Um, and there's another version of it, which is $95 per user per month. But Ideally, you start off with a crawl, so you start off with the smaller licenses, and there's some services to implement that. And so what I would do is give me a call and I can go through, I have a budgeting sheet, and actually, Angie, I should have prepared that for today, I apologize, but if anybody wants to give me a call, I can walk them through a budgeting sheet before they go too far down the road. Um, but really for me, the and I know this is self-serving, but CRM done right, and hopefully you see this in some of the things I show today, it's going to improve your productivity by I mean, we shoot for at least a two, 3%. So if you have a sales team that is got a quota of $500,000 million, I don't know what your sales team's quota is, but if you could boost productivity by even 2%, the software starts to pay for itself very quickly. But it's not just a matter of boosting productivity. It's It all goes back to improving responsiveness to your customers to drive retention and drive additional sales. You'll be able to move faster with this tool than you can right now with the tools that you're using. So for most companies, it creates a competitive advantage that you otherwise are losing out on, and it allows you to be more responsive than your competition so that you can outmaneuver them. So like for me, it's a strategic investment, not a cost. Um, I know, again, that's self-serving, but definitely if anybody wants to see budgets, I've got a budgeting spreadsheet that I can share with you. Okay, great. Thank you. And how does the quotes and orders from accounting work? Oh, great question. So, so what would happen is, and I, I don't have my system set up to show you the accounting integration, otherwise I'd just show you, but essentially what it does is it, it syncs up the, the customer records in here with the Business Central or NAV records. And so if you're on a record in CRM, so I think you can still see my screen. If this was a customer record, I would see a screen here with quotes, orders, invoice accounting data etc so i could see what's going on with that customer in the accounting world it's great because then if that customer calls up and says hey what's going on with this order i can go and look from here i don't need to go ask them in the accounting i don't need to switch over to a different system i can just see here if something's on back order or if it's shipped you know what the status is or if they're asking me hey i want to reorder 
you know, what I ordered last February. I can just go pull that up right here. And again, it's all at my fingertips as a salesperson. Hopefully that helps. Yes, thank you very much. I believe those are all the questions that we have today. If anybody has any further questions, please feel free to reach out to your account manager here at Anovia Consulting, and we would be more than happy to get those answers uh, addressed with you. Perfect. So I, Andy, oh, I just sorry. want to say thank you very much. Oh, that's okay. Th I just want to say thanks to everybody that attended, and I want to thank you for allowing me to present. I love this stuff. I use it myself, so I don't just sell this. So. I'm, I'm a user. I have all the same challenges and threats that you all do and all the opportunities that Dynamics affords me. So I love talking about this. So happy to answer any questions if you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn. All right, great. Thank you, Peter. And like Peter said, thank you for everyone who attended or if you're watching on demand, thank you for taking the time out to join us. For more upcoming webinars, visit Inovia.com slash events. And we also have new training workshops for you and your team members to attend. You can visit our training workshop page at anovia.com slash workshops for more information and to register for the training workshop that fits your role. And don't forget about our Anovia Conversation podcast. We have a library of podcasts for you to listen to, and you can find out about all those uh podcasts on our podcast page and that's anovia.com slash podcast so browse that selection and subscribe so you'll get notified when those new episodes air and also take a look at our conference page uh, that's anovia.com slash conferences you can see all the different conferences that we will be attending or hosting and i want to mention our customer conference that we are having in person in may 2022 here in south bend indiana at notre dame so take a look at the information and get registered today all right well we thank you again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you soon on another anovia webinar Take care, everyone. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Angie. I really appreciate it.